Again, I just want to thank everybody for coming. Um, Pastor Andre, I don't know if you guys seen him. He was sneaking in. And he just snuck out. Uh, he's a great man. He's a great man. He's been such a good, good person to me. You know, when uh, when we were, we got one little story when we uh, we started the ministry in our basement. If you guys haven't heard, and in my basement we were in there in August, um, and it was end of December around Christmas time, and people were giving and donating. And just so you guys know that I, I don't take a dime from this ministry. So I had money from people paying their tithes and everything. And so I opened up an account in my name because I got a lawyer and I started to get a nonprofit together and I was trying to get everything taken care of. And that was a slow process. So I started to accumulate money in the bank that people were <laughs> giving to the church. And so I called my accountant because if you don't know, we own a cleaning company. And I said, hey, look, People are donating to my makeshift church in my basement. And uh, what should I do with this money? He said, not do what you're doing right now. <laughs> I said, you better open up an LLC. You better get this figured out. So I was like, oh, no. And he said, how many people are needing down there? I said, yeah, about 30, 40 sometimes. He goes, Dave, this is a bad idea. <laughs> So then he started stressing me out, right? He's like, what if somebody gets hurt? You know how accountants are. They think these things through, right? They're like, what if somebody slips and falls? You know, what if somebody drowns when you're baptizing them? You know? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. So now my, my levels are heightened, right? The kids are coming downstairs, I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> So I started making calls. I'm trying to figure out how do you do this right? You know, I want to do this the right way. Um, I've heard so many times where people start uh, ministries or churches in their basement or do things, and I thought, you know, you're going to be down there for like three or four years. That's what I was thinking. You know, no big deal. And so as I got everything all figured out, we needed to get a building. And I'm like, Lord, this would be great as of January 1st for us to get a building. I really wanted a building, you know. And so I Drove up and down Highway 100, knocking on doors, seeing the rent signs, calling the people. Nobody wants a church. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants a church in their retail space. They don't want it. They don't want the traffic. They don't want the cars. They don't want anything about churches anywhere. Right. So I started going to the hotels because I heard of other churches in hotels. Nobody wants them. Everywhere I went, I felt a burden in in, in Brookfield. That's where I've always had a burden to be. So I thought, Lord, what am I supposed to do? And I came to the shop one day and dad was sitting at the computer and I came in and he usually knows when I'm like, you know, he goes, what's wrong? I said, dude, I don't know what to do. We got this church in the basement. I need a building. It's like, as we're talking on the phone, Pastor Andre calls us. He said, hey, you guys called me a couple days ago. I didn't get the message, but I heard you want to try to rent our building. And we're on, he has it on speakerphone. I'm like, yeah. And he puts me in. He goes, what about the location? I don't care where the location is. Tell him, yeah. So he gets him back on the phone. The guy's like, what do you want to look at? And the guy says, Andre says, well, you know, I'm free in a couple of days. I'm like, tonight, ask him tonight. We came over here. In the same five minutes that I walked through the office, defeated the guy called, we came over here, and the picture you see with me and the black guy, that's Pastor Andre. You know, when I seen him, I was like, oh man, you look like me. I thought you were gonna have a suit on, you know, I'm thinking, Dad, I gotta get dressed up, I got TNM clothes on. We showed up, he was in. And he goes, yeah, you guys can rent here. It'll be good. Amen. I said, well, don't you want us to sign a contract or something? And he goes, no, you're good. You're good. We got the contract signed and everything like that. But that's how it went down. I mean, it was just, it was incredible. Amen. Man, sometimes. Yes. God puts these people in your path and you have no idea. That's right. That's right. I mean, he just walked in and he goes, Dave, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't want to ramble. That was just the only story. I ain't got no more stories, Jim. Sorry. Um, so I just want to thank everybody.
First of all, I want to thank uh, uh, Gigi. Gigi's our events coordinator. I knew Gigi for about five minutes. And I met her over a year and a half ago. And she goes, hi, I heard you're going to start to do something. I can help. I didn't know she just came to the Lord. I had no idea. She's been such a tremendous blessing to us. She's helped us with everything. I am just, I give you honor. I appreciate everything you've done. You are incredible. I also want to say thank you to Corey and Carmen. Um, they've been just great. Nick and Dana, Sam and Sid, uh, my dad, my mom, my sister. My sister is legit, you guys. She's a little crazy. <laughs> But you know what? She's crazy for the Lord. Amen. You know what? If I was my sister and the one bad thing that somebody says about me was, she laid her hands on my head. I, I, I could die with that, right? That was the worst thing they could say about you. She'd be wanting to pray and God speaks through her. So I'm so thankful for her. She's been incredible. My brother-in-law, thank you, Eduardo. Um, he's been up here preaching. Uh, Eric and Ashley, they're not here today, they're gone. They were at the first service in our basement. I'm so thankful to them and their girls. They've helped out tremendously. Uh, Taylor, I don't know if she's here. Yeah. My little sweet Taylor, I love you, baby. Um, her, she's incredible. Mackenzie, she, she came with us from day one. She yeah. was in the building. She's yeah. been such a thing, uh, a, a tremendous blessing. Yes. Um, Eddie and Janet, they've been tremendous. Janet and Eddie, thank you. I mean, everybody has been so great. If I miss somebody, I'm sorry. Uh, but I thought it would be very important to tell you guys how thankful I am. If you guys have any strife in your family, you need to go and fix that. Yes, yes, yes. Hear me. Yep. Because you know what? At the end of the day, the family is going to stand with you. That's right. I'm not kidding. I was thinking about this all week, and I was thinking about this message, and I was talking to our church, and I was saying, you know, I really think I need to reset the vision for what, what this church is. You know, I've heard that a lot, and uh, I, I'm sorry, but yesterday morning, the Lord popped me up at 430, and this is what he gave me. I was up at 4.30 writing, and I typed so much, my other message was out and gone. So this is it. This has got to be for somebody. You know, I'm sorry. I, I'm not trying to hurt nobody, but I think this is for somebody in here. Trust me. Um, the biggest question I found out that people are always asking is, what is my purpose? If I had the title of this, I would say our purpose. That's what I would call it. And... Um, People always want to know, what is God's will for my life? What does God have for me to do in the kingdom? Or they say, God, just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. People almost want God to come down, you know, hey, come with me. I'm going to take you here. And you're going to do this. And now you're going to go here. Right? Don't we feel like, sorry, but that's what we feel like we, that we want God to do to us, Right? I mean, there's a lot of people that are like, they ain't going to move until God does it. But that, in, in human nature, we always want to have a purpose. It's just a human thing. There's so much humanitarianism, right, everywhere. It's, it's a big deal. All that stuff is very uh, impactful. Don't get me wrong. I think it's all good. But I think when you walk with Christ, you want to live a meaningful life. Amen. Right? Um, my story, it didn't start out as a story of uh, someone looking for purpose. It wasn't someone uh, asking God, what's your plan for me, God? I never started out that, that way, no. Uh, I was perfectly content with my little family, uh, raising my son, owning a business, and hunting a lot in the fall. Like, <laughs> you know, I, was, I was content that way. But the thing that activated God's plan for my life was simply truly, uh, pursuing a true relationship with him. Amen. That's what did it. I did a lot of reflecting this week. And the last year, all I can think about, how fast time has gone. I mean, one year, there's a remnant church here. We have a nonprofit. We have a board. It's like mind-blowing, right? I, and I can't even, I can't fathom that. I did some reflection upon my life, too, in one year. Um, and I look back to 2010. 2010 was my coming to Jesus moment. 
Now, I don't think everybody has this coming to Jesus moment because there's a lot of people that feel like, well, I really don't have a testimony, which isn't true. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's not true. But mine was 20 to 10, 2010. That's when I decided to pursue true relationship with Christ. That's when I made that decision. I mean, from 1999, the year I graduated, actually, at my graduation party when I was 18 years old, that's the first time I ever drank. Never drank. My whole life. 18. 1999. So from 99 to 2010, my life was a whirlwind. I like to say my life was flipped upside back, wherever it's down, upside down and crooked. That's really how it was. And when I stopped this week to look at it, it's the thing I, I remind myself most often about 2010 was when I made this effort to pursue Christ, I was going to do it differently. Because I was raised in church, right? So I wasn't going to serve the Lord at that point because I was afraid to go to hell. Right. I decided I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it anymore. Because um, you know what the thing that really allowed me to get to this point was this scripture. This is my secret. Now look, when you read it, I'm going to explain it. I'm going to break it down. Uh, Corey, you got it? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I adopted this scripture into my everyday life. The scripture gave me the ability to pursue true relationship with Christ. I'm going to tell you why. Because from 7 to 18 years old, I was raised in a strong faith. Everything was God. Everything was ministry. We had homeless people living with us. I knew Christ from 7 years on to 18 at an intimate level. But then I walked away from the Lord. There was actually a moment in my life when I decided in my heart, I'm going to live any old way I want to. And that was 99. But you know what I can never shake living that way? Is the guilt or the condemnation. I, I lived such a sinful life, all I ever did was feel bad. It was awful. I was never comfortable when I walked away from Christ. I, was always, I always felt bad about myself. Here's the definition of condemnation. The expression of very strong disapproval. That's all I felt. I knew Christ. I knew I was hurting him. I knew he was sad about the way I was living. I couldn't shake it. You know, this, I hate to say this with the kids here, but, but this led me to suicidal thoughts. It was time me and Matt were driving. I don't even know if he remembers this time. Matt is my best friend, you guys. You want somebody to stick closer to the brother that joker right there? Because he's seen me through all this time. I'm not, I, I, he could come tell the story. But I told him, man, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm so down and out. I, I'm, I've been thinking about, you know, taking my own life. And he's like, bro, what's going on? But the, the struggle from knowing Christ and living in sin, and knowing Christ and living in sin, it was just, it tore me up. I couldn't take it. Uh, it, it would lead to more rebellion. I would look for worldly highs, lustful things. Uh, looking back in 2010, I was really a 30-year-old man who was crying out for help. I couldn't get past the fact that I disappointed God so much. I thought, you know what? I thought God would never accept me again. I thought there's no way Jesus would ever forgive me for the things that I've done. I thought God is so disappointed with me you're toast, dude. And guess what else it weighed on me? I used to witness to my friends when I was younger. I thought, you destroyed all your witness. They'll never come to Christ because you showed them two different lives. But you know what? 2010, when my son was born, he was four months old. Through a course of events that could only be explained by the grace of God. Amen. Now, the stuff that happened wasn't good. Right. Some of y'all know my story. It wasn't pleasant. It was embarrassing, but it was the grace of God that that happened to yes, me. Amen. I began my journey again. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt there was no life without Christ at that point. Yes. For me, my mind was made up. I'm not going back to feeling guilty and depressed and worthless. I'm not doing it. Not ah, uh, no way, no how. Amen. You see, when I discovered that there is no condemnation for those in Christ, I was set. I was not going to live... I was not going to live for God and live with condemnation anymore. I had lived too long like that. I consistently felt worthless and crummy not living for God. Why was I going to start serving God and start feeling 
worthless and crummy. It's like, no, this can't be it. I'm not feeling this way. I'm not doing this. God flipped my script. He gave me 500 chances. You know what? I'm grateful. I'm going to walk in this new life that God gave me. When you decide to walk with Christ, it's an action of saying no to sin. It's not saying okay to sin. If you sin, it's okay. Or, you know, but people have this thing that if you sin, now, oh, too late, look what you did. Yeah. Right. Can't start over now. With Christ, there's always a start over date. Amen. Yes. We don't have a license to sin, but we have a license to get back up. Amen. This is 100% the reason why you ain't supposed to be casting judgment on no one. Right. Because you didn't die for them. Wow. We can't save nobody. Right. Jesus did. Right. In this present day, he also has grace for people. Amen. He has enough grace for me and you. In Lamentations 3, it says, Jesus' mercies are made new every morning. Thank you, Lord. You know why? Because all that goofiness in this world, we need a new mercy tomorrow. Yes. I mean, think about it. All this flesh, all this stuff that people are coming up with every day. There has to be a brand new, different mercy tomorrow because y'all don't know what these people are coming up with. Right. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of his sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Amen. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Amen. I'm not trying to preach some hyper grace or whatever, do whatever you want, live all willy-nilly, don't have condemnation because you're in Christ. But what I'm telling you is, he took my shame, Amen. and he took my guilt, yes. and he nailed it to the cross. Yes. Yes. He did that for you. Yes. In 1 Corinthians six twenty, it says, "He paid the price for sin." Yes. Here's the kicker. Here's the point that's overlooked. Here's where you come up with the with the hyper grace. There is therefore you got to pray. No, no condemnation to them which are in. You got to be in Christ. Amen. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You got to do those things. Right. Walking in the spirit, walk, not walking after the flesh, in pursuit of walking in new life, it's a pursuit of his ways. Yes. 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 <laughs> Somebody's hungry. I'll take a drink. <laughs> Checking Facebook. I'm not doing good. I'm trying. <laughs> um, uh, it's, it's having his mindset Not ours It's not pursuing the things of the flesh At that point in my life I began to sum up for Christ I pursued the word And I pursued prayer And I looked to be pleasing to him And most of all Anytime I failed Anytime I made mistakes I repented. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. I got here. Yes. And I tried not to repeat those habits. Yes. That's it. Yes. Uh -huh. My goal was to stay faithful to his word, stay faithful to uh, pursuing a deeper relationship. And that was it. I had no motives. I didn't have no agenda. I didn't have a, uh, I didn't have a plan. From 2010 and forward, I, 2010 and moving forward, I made an effort. And I told the Lord one thing. When I wasn't living for you, it was awful. I ain't going to live for you now and have things be awful. Everyone's expectations for me and my life were done in my mind. Remember something. All the things that I did, there's a lot of people that knew. So all I thought was, all these people are so disappointed in me. How can all of a sudden I be a holy roller now? They're going to look at me as fake. Oh, now you need Christ. 
It's like jail. Everybody in jail was Christ. <laughs> you know what? They absolutely do, man. You know what God will do? He will flip your script so much that you are so down on the ground yes. Yes. that all you can do is look up. Yes. That's what you want him to do yes. half the time. Yes. I always think, Lord, let whatever you have to do, don't take them, but let your will That's be right. done so they That's can right. recognize that they need you. Amen. I can't change what people think about me, but I didn't let it get me down. I worked to change the way I pursued Christ and the decisions that I made. That was it. Yeah. I'm a firm believer. If it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, I've said this a lot, it's a duck, right? So that I can change what I can change, and that's about it. I served God over the past 12 years with that same exact conviction. Right, there you go. My life is yours, God. Use me yes. for your purpose, yes. not mine. Yes. And through that, people's perception of me changed. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. My reputation changed. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Through my pursuit of Christ, it changed. I never tried to change my own narrative. Right. He changed it for me. I had a talk with my little beautiful niece there, Taylor, um, and she goes, you know what, Uncle Dave? You always talk about your past and how bad it was. And I sit there and I think, what could he have really done? <laughs> <laughs> you know what that showed me? The pursuit of Christ, he changed my future. Yes, That's right. Yes, yes. she has. She don't even know what I've done. I no longer had my past yes. mistakes dictating who I was going to be. There's a song. It says, my past he erased. Yes. My name he changed or testify. He changed my past. Yes. It was erased. Amen. I don't care what nobody thinks about me. I know I'm serving Christ, and guess what? I got some jeans on his level. No, I'm not. I don't think that. I'm going to get yelled at. Um, I was baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit when I was 11. I didn't need to be re-baptized when I came back to Christ. I just needed to be repentant. After service, we're going to baptize little man. That's right. This is going to be an outward sign of the confession of her faith. This is a godly example of their sinful flesh going down in that watery grave. Their sins are raised. When they're raised out of the water, they are resurrected to new life with Christ. There was a couple people who were supposed to come and be baptized, but it, 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 it fell through. But you know what? The Lord and the angels rejoiced and won it. Romans 6, 4 through 6 says, Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, Father now we also may live new lives. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that that sin might lose its power in our lives. We're no longer slaves to sin. Remember, through this public declaration that Matt is going to make, this outward sign, this is an open and repentant heart that she's having. Yes. Right. And that's all you need. Right. That's the beginning step. Right. Listen to me, you guys. Sin will destroy you. Yes. That's right. Sin will take your life. I think you guys already all heard this. I, I put this up here because I see people say this all the time. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay right. and it will take you further than you've ever thought you'd go. That happened to me. I remember multiple times thinking, how did I get like this? I wasn't raised like this. Those are the thoughts. But you know what's even worse than sin? Unrepentant sin. Unrepentant sin will change your course of eternity. Yes. Hear me. If you were previously baptized in Jesus' name and you've fallen away from Christ and you've lived a life full of sin, a repentant heart is all you need. Right. All you need to do is come to an altar. That's right. 
Come to an altar at home. Come to an altar right here. Wherever you want to spend time with the Lord, that's an altar. Yes. Do you know why? Because an altar is where things go to die. Yes. So you take everything to the altar and you leave it there. Don't take it with you. Right. That's right. right. Revelations 3 5 says, He that overcometh. One thing I learned uh, in PI, Purpose Institute, is that TH means coming. It means uh, continuing when you see that. It means over and over and over and over. So he that overcometh, that means who's continually trying, continually doing, who never stops, they keep on keeping on. The person that does that, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name of the book of life. See, we all need this Savior. We need this Jesus Christ. We should all be pursuing the same purpose, really. Where will I spend eternity? That's the purpose. And you know what else? How can I make heaven my home forever? And for me, it's how can I get Jenny and Carter to go there? And now I have to take it a step further. Who else can I try to get there with me? That's the purpose. Right. Honestly, this ministry was simply birth and leading a Christ-filled life. Yeah. I didn't wake up one morning and say, you know what, man, things are real boring. <laughs> Let me just spice things up and start a church. <laughs> that never happened, I, I promise you. <laughs> Jesus spoke to me on several occasions. Amen. And Jenny's like, you're crazy. And so I'm telling people, hey, this is what God's telling me. you got to pray, man, because... I think it's crazy. Don't you think it's crazy? You think it's crazy, right? But, but, but God really wants me to do this, so I don't know what to do. Should I not do it? It wasn't something I planned on doing. God gave me these small puzzle pieces, and they were all put together by him. Amen. Not me. Yes. He gave me confirmation after con co confirmation, and he took me through a gauntlet of teaching. But the kicker was, I was being prepared for this my entire life, and yes. I had no idea. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What God has been preparing me for my entire life for, and I didn't know about, what about you? Amen. Come on. Uh -huh. Come on. What has God been preparing you for? Yes. I know one thing for certain. This is what I'm called to do. To tell people that God has a plan for you, you need to believe it. Yes. Amen. That's right, Amen. My job is to speak life to people. I found that. God has a plan for you, and you've got to believe it. Yeah. Don't stop believing it. Don't let the devil lie to you. Right. If the devil lies to you and you don't do what God has called you to do, he wins. Yes. The devil has no power. He has no hold on you. He can't do anything to you. All he can do is lie to you. Don't let a lying tongue stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Wonderful, wonderful. Our purpose is all the same. As Christ's own followers, it's all the same. We got one purpose. It's to spend eternity with Christ. Try our best to get our family and people around you to understand he wants to spend eternity with you, you too. As a Christ follower, this is it. What's the vision for the church? That's what they keep telling me. This! I don't know. <laughs> it drives me nuts. I'm an entrepreneur. I know what that's like. This ain't that. Do you know what I'm saying? I know what it's like to market and try to build and try to do all this stuff. I've done that for TNL. I don't see that for the kingdom of God. I shouldn't have to swoosh you and, and why did God even get you here? Preach it. Yes. I gotta push people to Christ. And if people don't want that, I don't I'm gonna try. We got the balloons. <laughs> I've been crazy with this my whole life. This just didn't happen. Um, Jesus' love for me and you is unconditional. Yes, yes, yes. It's everlasting and it's never changing. Yes. Jesus said, what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but you lose your soul? Right. What we have to remember is our purpose is the same, but all of our plans are different. Right. Our journey, our process, now that's different. That's the one thing I like. The kingdom of God is a melting pot of people. Yes. If we all look and act and talk and be exactly the same, 
This ain't the kingdom of God. That's the military. Right. <laughs> Through my true relationship with Christ, this was birthed. Yeah, That's how Jesus is going to reveal it to each one of you. Amen. A lot of people know my story, but I thought it would be good to talk about it. But speaking about the remnant church and who the remnant church is called to be, this is it. An apostolic community of believers who call to be kingdom-minded at all costs, committed to loving God and others while operating in the fivefold ministry. That's who we are. This is our vision: is to reach the lost by connecting folks to Christ through love, His Word, coupled with prayer and fasting. And secondly, but certainly not lastly, to make disciples. That's our vision. That's what we're called to do. I didn't get that out of no book. I put that there myself. But you know what? It's out of the Bible. Amen. In Christ, we're called to be the church daily. Our purpose doesn't look too much different from our vision. We should operate our life daily with this kingdom-minded process. Is what I'm doing today pleasing to Jesus? Amen. Yes. And how does it expand the kingdom? Right. If you're spending time with your family and going to the Dells, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Right. Don't feel guilty. Don't so. These are the people that God said your ministry is your family. That's your first ministry is your family. Amen. Enjoy your family. Right. God gave them. Your kids are a blessing. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm doing today expanding the kingdom? Just how you walk and talk right. and actually expand the kingdom. Yes. Right. When people are around you, they should see different. Yes. They should see the love. Right? Uh, I don't need that one. Right, whatever. Yeah, I'll leave it <laughs> Use the gifts that God has given you. Be open to growth by developing your relationship with Jesus Christ daily. This is what I want to do here. Jesus is the attraction. I'm only called to be a helpful guide. Amen. That's it. We need to help lead people to repentance, right. salvation, mm -hmm. deliverance. You see, when people get saved, that's not it. Right. Yeah. They right. need to be delivered from right. some right. stuff. Yes. Right? right? Yes. They need deliverance. Yes. People need healing. Right. Father's Day taught me one thing. People are so hurt by their fathers, they don't even know how to accept Christ as their father. <laughs> that's good. People need healing. But we need to help them through that. Right. That's our job. This church is not my story. The Remnant Church is God's church. Yeah. It's his body operating in one mind and one accord. Yeah. This isn't no entrepreneurial venture. You know what this is? A refuge. Yeah. A hospital. Yes. And you know what? We're doing it together with one common goal. Heaven is where I want to spend my eternity. Yes. And I want to try to get somebody there with me. Amen. In closing, I have three foundational principles and I'm done. Number one. Love God and love your neighbor. Yes. That's the greatest commandment in the world. Yes. So many times, people have a problem doing this. Mm -hmm. You got to love people. Yeah. You got to love God. Number two is the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Amen. That has to be preached. Yep, yes. Jesus reveals to us through the gospel how much he loves us. Yes. But people, are, uh, they seem to think that um, a universal concept kind of. We're saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's step number one. We gotta take it a little step further. Yeah. Because you gotta read the Bible in totality. Right. Right? right? You can't just take something and adopt it. You have to read all of it. Yeah. And for us, the fundamental truth is we gotta be born again. Right. Water and spirit. Mm -hmm. To me, I think it's important. If the Holy Ghost is something God gives you to operate gifts in your life, why would you not want it? Right. Yeah. If speaking in tongues is meant for the unbeliever, why would I not want to speak in tongues? Right. That's right. right. Come on. That's right. If you think it's cookie crooked or goofy or weird, try it. Yeah. You know, what do I say? People are like, hey, you want to smoke a blunt? Yeah, they'll do that in a second, right? Yeah. You want to speak in tongues? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Don't get crazy now. <laughs> Operated in kingdom minded unity. Yes. We're the church, we're the body of Christ. The church is the people, right. not the right. building. Right. 
There's so much division in the body of Christ. Yes. It's absolutely unnecessary. Right. Two of the most influential men in the Bible. Who am I going to talk about? Peter and Paul, right? Yes. They didn't agree all the time, right. right? But them jokers were given the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. That was Peter. Paul was the guy that Jesus chose to move the message. They didn't always agree. You guys, we ain't in a game. Right. It ain't our game versus their game. We're all one church body. Yes. Yes. Each one of us has something to offer. Right. We all have gifts. Amen. We need to operate in a five-fold ministry. I think that's very powerful. Yes. I know there's certain accountability that comes with different offices in the five-fold ministry. I get that. I'm not going to say there's not. But I do think it's important that a church, a healthy church body, operates in the five-fold ministry. Right. That's right. Yes. Yes. Remember, don't critique yourself based on other people. Don't let somebody else be your measuring stick. Right. Yeah. Their process, their plan is different. Right. Maybe they can do it. You can't. Be you. Amen. God has called you to be you. John 12, 32 said, And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Point people to Jesus. He's the attraction. The remnant church ain't the attraction. He is. Amen. We ain't people's savior. He is. Yes. You guys can stand. So good. Yes. I read this the other night, and uh, I thought, wow, powerful, powerful. i never seen this before. The thing I find about the Bible is I always read it through. I just read it, and I start over. And what I've been doing is I've been starting over in different versions. Um, don't think I do anything crazy, man. I read the Bible every morning for like 10 or 15 minutes. That's what I do. I need to do more. I study. I try to sit down and put intentional time, but that's, that's where things begin with me. But I spend time in the morning with Christ, and I read this the other day. And now this is Jesus talking to the guys who were out in the boat fishing, right? Now look what Jesus tells them. And when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. This is Jesus talking. But Simon answered, like we all do, but Lord, you don't get it. <laughs> and he said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. What is he saying? Jesus is like, I know, you've been trying it your way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your way don't work. That's right. yes. My way is a little different. Amen. It's a little deeper. Yes. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Get a little deeper. Read your word. Spend some time with the Lord. You got my song, Corey? I had a, supposed to be a beautiful song playing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not the prototypical. We got to go a little deeper. I appreciate you guys for being here. But if you get nothing from, from what we're doing here, if you leave, I just want you to know that the Reverend Church is just about people. Yeah. We're about pushing people to Christ. We ain't trying to have the latest and the greatest, the biggest, the brightest. We're just trying to say, hey, he's our father. If you need help, you come here. If you need to be restored and you can only stay here for six months, you're good. Come here for six months. We ain't going to turn nobody away. Because that's what Jesus did. Too many times we turn people away or we turn a blind eye to someone and Jesus would have never done that. He opened the people. Be open to loving people, even if they don't look the way you look or dress the way you dress or act the way you act. Then you be the example. You show them Christ. You know what I find out? Sometimes people around you, you may be the only Jesus they see. So how are you reacting? What are you showing them? What are you portraying? I want to pray for you guys. And I'm going to dismiss, spend a little time in prayer. Um, then I'll give an announcement after altar call. Okay? Yes, sorry.